Okay, so now I got my big fat head out of the way. <laughs> so I got the glazing down in the bottom pony wall slot and it fits as intended. Okay, and I got it into this uh, up, uh, vertical column. Sits in there about an eighth of an inch and in behind here almost goes into the bathroom, but not quite. And there's a little bit of outward deflection, but that's good because the upper roof, uh, the idea is that it pulls it in tight to keep the you know the vertical glass like uniform to try to avoid any adverse reflections right there's a lot of things you got to deal with with this you get like you can't handle it too much like you don't get fingerprints on it and then you're always going to be dealing with dust right so this thing's going to be a magnet over time it'll suck dust in through the back door here and but it's the way it is and it's ho and it's set back and you'll probably never notice it but and when the light's on it'll probably go away so now what I'm going to do is, is uh, I'm going to wrestle the roof on the first part. Okay, the actual finished liner, thank goodness, it's got all the lighting and the wiring goes down through here and then in through the tube. And I'm really thanking myself now for designing it this way because it would be a nightmare trying to put the whole thing on as a unit down in and threading the cables through but you'll see like I'll show you that part so now what I want to do is I got to get the glazing so like I just have a deeper block here so this is the important part that I get the glazing to sit up in here whereas this I left room for this long run here just in case right it's I can't get it into there which I cleaned out with a knife like this a little bit more now, if I get it up down tight into there, then then I consider it a full success. But there's a good chance that it won't need to. It'll just there's enough here of this overhang valance to, to, to just pull that corner in and it should sit up flush against here. Tricky fit, but that's why I made the joinery down here because I knew I had to pivot it. Experience helps in these matters, but you never know, right? You never know how it's going to go. Okay, so I want to show you one issue that I ran into. Man, I'm so close on this model. So see this hack right here, this chip? So I can't believe, like everything went in perfectly, right? The height is right. The, the, uh, the height's perfect for the glazing. Uh, but I was too short, about five millimeters on the full length. And I want to do this in one piece because it's a model. And if you build it in separate pieces, like the prototype would have been done, uh, it's not going to sit straight. It's going to be wonky. And I, and 
I want to get a nice straight run, right? And, and the way to do that is one rigid piece. And then I'll use tape for the glazing uprights. There's three or four in the painting, which that's no problem because I already tried that and it looks great. Now here's, now I almost got it. Like I can't believe it. Like it went in the bottom pony wall good. I got it into this up vertical column. I got it in nice in behind the bathroom uh, wall here, tucked in nice. I had a little piece of tape back here just to pull it tight against the door frame. So it started the run and it went right up nice into the valance like this slot here. I was really, like I started to chase it all the way along by pulling these tabs, you know, like as I was going and looking underneath the light and getting it in there, right? I was like, oh, this is awesome, right? And then it click, click, you know, oh, it's going in. And then all of a sudden, pinch here. Like it won't, like I don't have enough to pull it out to the curve, right? Like this, see? I just couldn't get it to pull out more and then I chipped it right there. And it kind of shows. So I'm going to cut a new piece and then hopefully if all goes well, um, I'll be home free. Okay, I got it in. Woohoo! Oh man, I'm telling you, was that ever tricky to do? I had to uh, do it twice, right? I had to cut a second uh, piece of, of, of plastic for the glazing. But I got her in, man. She looks really good. Of course, you can see the studio lights glinting off it there. But uh, when it's at certain angles in the lighting on the layout, it, uh, uh, you won't see that, probably. And when it's lit on the inside, I'll show you that as well. It would probably give off a nice reflection inside back in. So I'm pretty happy with that. And you can't even, I mean, you can hardly see the glass, right? So it's really, it worked out pretty much as I envisioned it. Uh, but I'd have to say that it was the challenging part of the model is getting it in. Um, just, you know, it's, uh, I think if I was to do this again, I would really make sure that, that the glazing grooves are really thought through and that they're identical, both top and bottom, with a larger gap and a type of... Uh, let me just show you what I would do for any of you that are considering it. Like if you're going to make the uh, gap, like uh, just say this is the pony wall right here. This is the outside. And this is just, you know, the bull nose and the wainscoting and the sidewalk. And this is the inside of the diner. Remember how I built a slot Then the inside wall? Make sure that, that, you know, the glazing drops down in here. Uh, I think the next time for the top... Right, because it'll look like uh, the top will be sort of identical when you put the hood down. Is I would make sure that you have a good groove cut away right here on both sides. So that when the glazing, you know, like the glazing goes up in there, like it doesn't catch. Because I had like a few problems with this here. Like just say this is the top where the glazing goes up inside the, you know, the fascia. Uh, the glazing, when I was trying to get it in, was catching here and pinching and trying to get that full length and then the curve to take that top piece was a real challenge. But then I did scrape it back. Like I had to sort of redo it there. But anyway, that's what I would do. That's the lesson I learned from that. And I couldn't uh, I couldn't install this, this pole in first. So what I did was is I just drilled a larger hole here and then it's also on the bottom and I'm just going to draw I'm just going to paint a piece of plastic dowel and then just drop it in and then I have um, I'll just show you here painted tape uh, that I'm going to use for the uh, glazing strip I'll just stick it right on like that once I just figure out the placement, there's one one on each corner and then there's one further down. Okay, so we'll just have a look at that then and put the roof liner on and then light it up. So let me turn the lights down a bit here. So you can see I can just dim the light so that'll be 
the light uh, that'll be probably in the bathroom or, or no the back kitchen and then this will be the main uh, diner corner where the scene is the classic scene and then this one for the bathroom and the nice thing is is I can dial these up and down just to set the mood within the diner okay See what happens? The file's stuck in there now. This is the kind of stuff that happens, eh? A model like this will fight you all the way to the end. <laughs> so the liner goes in like this, and you can pull these wires and you can slip that underneath. Awesome. Now there's only one thing left to do, which I saved for last. Okay, that's the barbed wire. I made this barbed wire up, and that's going to go here on these metal extrusions I mounted on the top of this cornice. It's a, a, a spin of barbed wire going along there because of the somebody's been stealing the copper wire off the air conditioner <laughs> and the pole. It's been stripped twice already, okay? So finally, right? The diner final. Uh, let me first just say, I just want to... Uh, put a thanks out for all the subscribers to the channel and all those that support it uh, because this wouldn't be possible without you and I just want to uh, give you a special thanks for everyone that's uh, followed the series and shared uh, you know insightful and encouraging uh, comments yeah, this was a, a, a tough project really it was, I mean it was a lot of fun but it was incredibly challenging uh, in a lot of ways. Um, like I never really realized, like I say, when I first took it on, it was just the idea to do the Edward Hopper painting this scene, which is to the left of this, uh, this divider right here, this glazing strip, um, which I'm really happy with uh, how it turned out. I mean, it is a chill, right? Like when I show you clo really close up pictures, like it, you can see flaws, but that's with any model though. Like close up photography sort of ruins the experience sometimes, you know, because we don't uh, view, uh, well, in this particular case, HO, this is how we view HO, like about this distance, right? Um, but, you know, I have to say that uh, the whole build was just a wonderful experience. I, I, was able to put into practice, you know, lots of different um, methods and skills, you know, that I was happy to share with people, uh, if it helps them somewhat. Um, I just want to say also, thanks for the encouragement for those that said, are you going to put figures in it and lighting? Because I wasn't at first, right? Like you can see the lighting, like it actually looks, see that's off, that's on off on it looks better live like it really does it has the moody um incandescent kind of light to it um it's just hard to photograph without compromising some setting on the camera that'll wash out other areas but this is a fairly high iso setting just to get that uh so yeah so i'm really glad that i did that just to point out a couple of things so i use this woodland scenics light hub right just for those of you that were wondering uh, I really like it because I can adjust, like here I'll show you, like I can adjust, um, you know, see I can dim the light and then dim the bathroom. There's the bathroom light there. 
on the bathroom. And then I also added in that foyer light. And then of course there's the main diner counter scene that's lit up. And then uh, the back door here too. And then furthermore, there is an exter external light too that I added that's also, but I just haven't wired it up yet. You wouldn't notice it under this lighting condition, but up on the layout with uh, controlled dimming and so on, it should look really dramatic, this scene, because the tracks actually are going along here, right? So I'll be shooting under the overpass. It just, the whole town uh, that I plan to build up around this is going to be really, really immersive uh, with the short line railroad as the animation. I'm really excited about it. It's a good anchor point to, uh, you know, to build you know, that full signature scene around. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to say thanks once again. You know, it's just a great project. You'll see more of this when it's on the layout. Like just in closing, the location isn't finished yet. So that's why I haven't shown pics. I mean, there were a few I can show you quick that I was staging some shots. Yeah, so you get the idea of uh, what I'm building up, like over on this end, right? I, I found some kits by DPM, and uh, I'm going to scratch build the other flats. And, um, you know, basically just build the, you know, the atmosphere and the scene around the diner, okay? So cheers. Thanks once again for following the series and showing all your support. And happy modeling, and I hope that you have a great day. Yeah.